start with something that this this house in particular this neighborhood in particular is very familiar to you mm -hmm. um tell us a little bit about where you shot <clears throat> the texas ties um mm -hmm. but also particularly this neighborhood and um what it means to you to be able to shoot this film um in somewhere you know all too well yeah um so the neighborhood is the neighborhood that i grew up in and uh on the uh you know line of pasadena and southeastern texas um it, it is the film is shot in the house that I grew up in, um, and um, the you know it just was uh, the story is based on um, true events that happened in in that house. Um, I'm like I'm sorry I know I'm like I've got the camera and I'm like ah, um, but I know y'all are gonna edit it so. And they won't. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm kind of curious, you, in your, I don't know if it's a director's statement or it might have just been <clears throat> one of the videos I watched, yeah. um, showcasing Hispanic actors and the Hispanic community is something yeah. we don't get to see very right, often. Right, right. Um, and this film is all about that. Um, right, yeah. In particular with the Los Ricos is the, the title of the, the place, but tell me a bit about wanting to make a film that showcases a very underrepresented group in film. Yeah, that, that, yeah. Um, so the neighborhood that you know I grew up in is a primarily Latino community, um, and um, I, uh, when I decided to make the film, I had been thinking about how, like, for myself as a as a woman director, uh, that women are you know marginalized. We don't get a lot of opportunities to be represented uh, behind the camera and and as visionaries in film, and it was I thought it would be a really an, uh, an amazing thing to do to bring two communities together, um, and because the, the the community in my neighborhood and the, the the young people that the film is inspired by um, are Latino, I thought oh this would be just an incredible way to bring people together um, to help each other rise up and have opportunities. Opportunities because you know we don't see a lot of uh, Latino talent on screen, almost none. And I really, uh, as a white person, um, took that for granted because I see through white eyes. And so I have seen males mostly being portrayed on film, and I have lived my life through the white male gaze. Or, you know, I've watched media through the white male gaze. I have experienced myself through the white male gaze because that's all that we're all, we've been offered up until recently. And um, <clears throat> so um, I just... Once I started working on this film and we started talking a lot about that and I started watching more media with a different set of eyes um, through, I don't want to say through Latino eyes or something like that, but like to talk to, um, you know, our team about that perspective and about, you know, David had said like I didn't grow up seeing brown kids. Um, in television, you know, and, and in the media. And, and now that I see that, I, I, I see now that that is still, uh, you know, a major problem, that we aren't still aren't seeing it. And so it has truly been um, an honor to, to, to be part of this experience about, um, about giving um, these young people um, a, an opportunity to be seen on screen um, as more than just, you know, the stereotype that we are often been told in the news or in um, television shows or something like that. Um, to, to, to see them as being real people, as normal people, um, and not just criminals or something, or, or gardeners or maids, or, you know, not that they're not, you know, do you, you know what I mean? Like, but just to see as normal, you know, everyday people. Um, it's been amazing, so. Before I get to ask about um, <clears throat> acting with fellow Hispanics in, in this type of role, I do want to ask a question about diversity with your team. Um, David, I think you're from Portland, who ended up in Austin. You ended up in New York, and I think that's where you met your South Korean DP. Yeah. You've got a Canadian editor. Like, diversity in your production seems 
a lot different than most films. How did you yeah. guys build your team and, and how did you guys all connect? Because it does seem yeah. there's so many different well, touching points. Do you mind if I talk about that Hopefully, at yeah. all? <laughs> okay, well, so for me, um, my whole life, this has been my dream to have a team of people who represent all the voices of our country, you know, of the United States. And um, the way that this kind of came together was it was just, um, it really fell into place, like accidentally, because the DP, I, you know, for me, like I really wanted to have a, a, a female DP and a female editor. That was really important to me. And um, I interviewed uh, a lot of people, and it was just that the two, the, 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 the two people that really kind of stood up and said, I really understand this film, and I love this script, and I really want to work on it, put my heart into it, and who were incredibly talented were... Una Lee, our director who's from New York and who is also from uh, South Korea, and then uh, and Carmen Morrow, our editor, who is um, Canadian and also Chinese American. So um, uh, that that was that was just a, an incredible, you know, kind of cherry on top of everything. And then uh, finding Eddie Rodriguez, our producer, was a purely an accident you know he I had reached out to somebody through Seed and Spark uh, I had followed a campaign that was being shot in Houston and I saw that Eddie had worked as an assistant director and he um, <clears throat> I reached out to him to see if he would AD our film and he read the script and said I, I, I I don't want to just AD it. I want to produce it because if you're coming into my hometown and making a movie on on my turf I want to be part of that you know and so it just, it really did kind of just fall into place that way. But, but like I said, like that, that was my dream for that to happen. And so it's like, I guess if you like envision something that you want so badly to happen, um, then maybe the universe kind of works in that way, you know, so that, to, to, that it'll fall into place. Um, because those were the people that, that, you know, re stepped up and said, I believe in this movie and I want to do it. You know what I mean? And maybe, you know, they also just, you know, saw themselves in it. You know what I mean? And and for them it was so important too because, you know, they're, they're coming from uh, underrepresented communities as well. They saw it was important that we all have to kind of come together and, like I said, lift each other up, you know, so. David, I'd love to know with your Austin ties, was there any bridging of Austin and Houston? I know with us... Dallas and Austin, there's there's a bit of separation, and, and mm -hmm. there seems to even be from from Houston and Austin. But I'd love mm -hmm. to know from your perspective, kind of what were you able to bring differently than the, what was already in the Houston? Because you guys have a lot of producers. There's almost ten of y'all. Mm -hmm. um, it's a pretty yeah. big yeah. Yeah. producing group here. Um, well, as far as uh, the connection, um, you know, I'm from Austin originally, and went to the University of Texas, and then moved to Portland, Oregon. Um, 2003, moved down to L.A. in about 2012. Um, and uh, a lot of my, a lot of the uh, intentions and a lot of the um, kind of motivations for characters and stuff, that was all based on my experience and as a kid in Austin uh, growing up and kind of the way people spoke and, and kind of the way that I dealt with you know, neighborhood bullies and, and, and guys in the neighborhood and, and an imposition of machismo. You know, growing up in the 80s as well, uh, there was a different view uh, as there is now, hopefully. Um, as far as the connection between Texas and uh, between Austin and, and Houston, um, you know, I, I wasn't actually able to get down for production, so I was in LA kind of working my day job at the office, getting uh, updates from Laura. But it felt really good to be part of, of, a, of a Texas production. And there's just something about it. And, and for people who aren't familiar with the state, they'll talk about Austin, they'll talk about Houston and Dallas and, and kind of make it interchange, interchangeable. But it's not at all. If you spend any time here, you know that those are three completely different worlds. And then within those worlds, there are completely different sections, you know? Like, yeah. there's a there's a there's a vast and not in a bad way there's a vast attitude that comes with being from texas and 
it's it doesn't necessarily mean you walk around and you're like oh, I'm from you know some some people are but some people from North Dakota I'm sure are like that too I'm from North Dakota but really there's just there's just a whole world of being Texan and so that was really special being part of it and and now uh, through the festivals and 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 through this experience in here and, and getting to hang out with uh, all the actors from Houston and Eddie um, and being here in Dallas there's a real kind of wonderful connection that comes with it, a, a Texas magic that I think uh, hopefully is on screen, you know. Well, let's talk about that on screen part. Um, I'd love to ask, getting to work with your group of actors that you got to work with, but also I've, I've been able to go through Pasadena. I've been able to see Pasadena where a lot of people, I don't think when they think Houston, they necessarily think of a, a place like Pasadena. It's something refreshing to see on screen. How much fun was it to shoot in that area, but also capture that particular type of Latino. It's different than I think what we have up here in Dallas and certainly different than what you see in Austin and San Antonio. Right. Um, yeah, it was super exciting. Um, it was a kind of a familiar thing because um, I mean, where I grew up, it was right outside of Houston, but it not it was not like Pasadena or South Houston. South Houston was a little rough, still is. <laughs> <laughs> um, but shooting in that area, actually, um, like South Houston, you would think like, oh, like uh, you don't want to be there late at night. But really, we were. We were up until like 5 a.m., sometimes 6 a.m. shooting. Um, and the neighborhood was actually quite nice. Um, the camaraderie there, everybody knows each other. Um, everybody knows of each other. Um, and it's very welcoming, so it's really nice. And it's definitely um, not that stereotypical, like, oh, it's rough, it's, it's hood, but um, there's definitely that camaraderie there. So it, it was really comforting to be there, for sure. How much fun was it, once you guys are in the house, the, the transformation of each of the characters? Not only, I think, mentally, but physically, what we get to see the audience, mm -hmm. when you guys kind of take over the house, Talk to me a bit about surrounding yourself in that place and what you enjoyed most about working in that environment. It was really fun. Um, actually, a lot of the actors were staying in the house mm -hmm. during shooting. Um, we like sometimes we would stay there uh, if there were like late nights and everything like that. Some of the actors, but most of them were on set. Um, and just taking over the house as like people, not even as like as characters, as people, it was like this real life transformation. You know, we got to know the house as we were shooting and exploring the house as we were shooting. And it was just like everything was happening in real time. So it was awesome, super cool. Her house was so nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, 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 it was just, um, it was definitely exciting for sure. I wanted to say one thing about being in the neighborhood and shooting in the neighborhood, if that's okay. Yeah, Do you mind? Yeah. Um, so, you know, growing up in that neighborhood, knowing the kids and stuff, and a lot of those people have moved on and moved out. Um, and the people in the neighborhood have always known about the Los Ricos house, you know. They don't call it that. That's just something I came up with because I just thought it would be fun to nickname it, you know. But um, they people were talking about that how exciting it was that we were filming they were so ex it, it's always been the house has always been kind of this myth you know which is why kids were always breaking into it to see what it would look like on the inside and um, so they were all talking about how exciting it was that somebody w they, that we were filming in there and that they were going to get to see what the house looked like on the inside finally um, and <clears throat> And they would talk about what they thought about my family, because maybe they didn't necessarily know my parents or anything like that. And, um, and, um, and people would drive by uh, the house while we were filming to try to check out the action and see what was going on. Or people would ride by on their bike and they'd come by and back and forth and back and forth. And that was just so fantastic. And I actually got to know, and again, I haven't lived there in 25 years. You know, I left when I was 18 and never went back. And so I loved having the opportunity to get to know my neighbors on another level in a way that I had not known before. Because again, a lot of maybe older people who I didn't get to know. Um, like there was a different perspective. 
Yeah. Seeing people from a different perspective, because I knew the kids, but didn't necessarily know the adults, you know. And so I, you know, got to talk with a guy who was walking his dogs and just chatted with him. And he had lived around the corner the whole time. And and um, one night we were filming the car chase scene, and we were on the street going back and forth. And there were these guys who owned a record company or something. Do you remember that? And they brought enchiladas out, oh, yes. enchilada <laughs> dinners out to feed our crew and cast. And that was so amazing, you know, to, to, to feel welcomed in that way and to have that relationship with the community for people to be excited. You know, the cops would come by to check on us and, and neighbors called the cops on us <laughs> twice to make sure that we were okay, you know. Really? Yeah, well, there was there's a, there's a scene when kids were fighting in the street that we were shooting, and they called the cops on the kids, the actors, and the cops showed up and said, oh, well, the neighbors were worried because they saw some kids beating some kids up, and oh, so yeah. they called. And then we were filming outside of our house one night, and um, they were... Uh, we started getting lights shined into our backyard or into our front yard and then about 20 minutes later the police showed up and I walked up and I said I this is my house I'm here we're shooting a movie it's okay and they said oh, okay your neighbors called the cops because they thought that there were a bunch of kids running around in the yard so you know what I mean like it felt so cool to feel so cared about you know um, There was an old lady who let us opened up her home to us, and you know I've always driven by and seen that house, and I never got to meet her and to go into her home and see her home and kind of talk to her and spend some time with her. That was like very special, you know. I guess that's the cool thing about making films that are so personal to you, and especially on your home turf, is you get to look at it from a different way, you know. So um, I'm very proud that. We've made our neighbors so proud of where they live. You know what I mean? So, As an actress, getting to deal with a filmmaker that it's obviously passionate, Yeah. how does that impact the way you prepare what you wanted to bring to the, to the role? It must have been different because you know someone that not only lived there but mm -hmm. knows the community and knows exactly what she wants to see out of you guys. But you guys seem to have a lot of fun with this. Yeah. It's a... It's a pretty dynamic group of kids, mm -hmm. and um, y'all do get to do some wild things in this film. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, how much fun was that? It was a lot of fun. It was honestly a little overwhelming um, because I didn't really take it in um, like at first because I didn't know like what was happening. I didn't know what to expect like going into this. Um, I really thought it was just going to be like a little. Nikon camera and uh, maybe like three people with like flashlights or something. I don't know, <laughs> but um, it was like really overwhelming in the best way. You know, um, I got there. Everybody was so great. Um, all of the cast members got along so well. It's like we were all best friends by the end of it. It was fantastic. Um, in regards to like how does it heavily impact the way that I kind of go on as an actor um, in this role? and a Hispanic, you know, in the industry, um, it heavily impacts it because the way that I see um, people react to this film in particular, they're like, oh my God, I know this person. Oh my God, this person's in my life. Oh my God, that's me, you know? Um, it, it really makes me realize how much um, of an importance representation is. You know, it's really, really important, especially we're on this like wave of like, hey, a lot of minorities are coming out into um, the film industry and um, just kind of being seen a lot more and represented in a better way. Um, so it just kind of makes me feel like I can be a part of that and definitely um, kind of just take part in it. So, yeah. David, to kind of piggyback off mm -hmm. that, being able to, to Bruce produce something that almost can be used as a calling card for change in the industry to some extent. Um, how much 
how, how more personal did this become doing this project compared to something different that would have just been you're just working on something? Yeah. Uh, well, it was personal from the get-go. I think as soon as Laura, she, um, she pitched it to me. We met up kind of randomly. We were both kind of in L.A., and I personally was in the doldrums artistically. I had written a feature on my own and had broken up with a former writing partner. We were trying to break into the TV business and everything, and, and so... Um, this story came at a magical time. She, she pitched me the story. I said, oh, it sounds great. It reminds me of this. It reminds me of that. We talked a lot about cinema of the 70s, but, uh, and, and some films that we thought would be good spiritual influences for it. Um, but it didn't take long uh, once we started building these characters and fleshing them out that it became extremely personal. And then I realized that you know, this is this will be the kind of movie. This is the kind of work that that I want to be associated with, uh, social, socially conscious drama. Um, you know, th- and 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 don't get me wrong. I mean, I love being entertained, and I spent you know decades. You know, when I first started out uh, making movies, it was me and my high school buddies in a field with uh, pellet guns and homemade blood packs and. Uh, black cats blowing them up and we were trying to make like lethal weapon type movies you know and everybody's like 17 and supposed to be like hardened you know I'm too old for this you know whatever Uh, but it was it was super fun and and it still is and it's still magical but when it came to writing this story um, it was a chance to really kind of portray Latinos in a way that I hadn't seen before and in a way that I had grown up with and the struggle that every young person deals with uh, looking for acceptance. You know, when you're 15, 16, everybody has that experience of like going to a party or something and they do something completely different from what they usually do. But it's because they're trying to get noticed by a boy or a girl. And there's so much drama just involved in that one thing that you do Um, that it's such a big deal to your world and it impacts you so much. So we wanted to make that part of this film. And we knew that, you know, there was a weight to it in in terms of socially, how it would be viewed and what we were doing. Um, And we knew that we didn't want to, like, try and sit down and, and, you know, write a film with a message. Because when you do, I I don't know, I don't have experience with that. But I feel like... If you try too heavy, heavy-handedly to go in there and try and change people's minds and try and like write something with a message, then it's, it's, I don't know if it's going to work. I, I wouldn't go about it that way, and that's not how we went about it with this necessarily. You know, to me, it was about the story of these characters and, and their struggle with their own identity and trying to be who it was that they had wanted to be and who, who they want to become and because that's that's just inter- insurmountable that's that's the human condition and i think that's what everybody responds to regardless of where you're from uh, but then in particular you know as we went on and and i got to you know put spanglish in there and and kind of channel the the people that I knew growing up and, and, and relatives and people in the neighborhood and, and, and everything, it, it, um, it became apparent to me that, you know, this, this'll, this is a little bigger, you know, um, and that's, that's a beautiful thing, you know, and it's wonderful to, to be involved in a project like this. So it's amazing to, to, to be associated with it. Shot-wise, I'd love to know, is there a particular favorite moment in the film, maybe... An angle in the house we get to see. The, the car chase to me is one of my favorite sequences. Thank you. Um, but for you guys, was there anything that stands out when you get to look back at it? Like, ah, I can't believe we caught that or we got that specific shot. That was a tough day and we got that shot. Is there anything that stands out? I, I, I have a few thoughts, but is there anything for you? That I'm going to think because I know there was one. Um, for me... The moment when um, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> well, I'm gonna do something comedic here. So, <laughs> um, one th- I wasn't there for the actual um, 
uh, scene for this one because I wasn't in it, but the boys were out in the neighborhood. I didn't even know this was a thing, but um, one of my favorite scenes was whenever um, Carlos <laughs> gets into the car after he like is messing with the boys. He just kind of does something up the sunroof <laughs> and he just dries off like that. And I didn't notice it up until like the actual, I think second viewing. So we, oh. so we had two premieres in one day. So we had like <laughs> um, the Houston Latino Film Festival mm -hmm. in the morning, afternoon. And um, later that evening we had like our own personal uh, premiere for friends and family. It wasn't until the second one I actually noticed it. I'm like, whoa, hold on. That was cool. <laughs> I didn't know. And it was like one of my favorite comedic moments um, in the movie. And it's just made it much more, um, I guess, relatable in a way because it's just super cool, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Do you want to share? Your yeah, yeah. Yeah. I feel when that moment happens in the film and if the audience you know, when the audience laughs, I feel in that moment that they're hooked in now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, there's a few moments in the beginning of the film where that happens. And I'm like, OK, we're in. You know, we're in. We're on the journey. You know, they're, they're going with us. So um, for me, the scene that um, the moment that I love the most, the shot that I love the most is actually when Matt goes into the man's closet um, for the first time and is going through the clothes. Um, I think the music is so beautiful um, that Ming Vaz um, composed. Um, I love the um, the sound of the child's um, music box kind of tinkling. There's so much in that moment to me about a person's curiosity, just the curiosity of going in and exploring it at, uh, in this stranger's home and just kind of going through his clothes. This idea of, uh, of, of, you know, wealth and touching these nice clothes that he doesn't necessarily have. Um, and then pulling that shirt out and looking at it. That shirt to me, um, just, it represents so many things to me. Um, it's, this idea of the you know the white guy polo you know what I mean and you know what I mean that's bright blue <laughs> yeah um, <laughs> um, and you know uh, this just this beautiful blue color um, and he's looking at it and it's also just this uh, it's also a man's shirt you know it's not a boy's shirt um, it's a collared shirt and that he puts that on and to me that transformation is so deeply m moving it's becoming it's this idea of how uh you know pe people who are not um the white man no offense um that we feel we have to be like that we have to put that on in order to gain acceptance in society yeah I mean as a woman you know I kind of grew up as a girl thinking that I had to act like a man in order to get respect as a director or whatever um, you know only recently have I allowed myself to cry and you can see I cry all the time now <laughs> and it's a joke because I cry all the time on set and um, you know before that I would all, never allow that to happen you know what I mean so like um, so that moment is so powerful to me to see him take that on it just means so many things that transformation um, I just love it so much, and he, he's so beautiful in that. You know, it's just a simple little moment. Um, David, can you top that with your favorite moment? Uh, well, <laughs> the whole the whole thing is my favorite moment, really. No, and I and, and I'm not just saying that to cop out, but like for me as a writer, you know, like I said, it was sad not to be on set, but when I started seeing stuff footage come back and. I remember Laura sent me, uh, there's a scene where um, Gerardo and Justin, um, Steve and, and Matt walk into the house for the first time and there's just this air and they're just exploring. It's like super quiet. And I'm like, oh my God, that's, that's exactly what we talked about. That's like, it's like in our imaginations, like what we saw, that this just this like quiet moment of that happening. Um, but 
overall uh, the performances from our from our actors are amazing um they're stars and i i say that all the time and hopefully hopefully uh yeah <laughs> hopefully not not are they all not uh, hopefully everyone sees it and i think they do when you watch the movie there's there's chemistry that you don't get without a director who's really involved in process without actors who are willing to go on that journey and they make uh, they make the roles their own, you know, and, and and that's to see that, to see flesh, you know, for this. You you create a skeleton as a as a screenwriter, and you don't know what's going to happen. And then you see it, and it's like, oh man, it's it's better than I could have ever imagined. Like seeing it still, you know, watching them on screen, it's it's powerful for me just to see the realization of ideas and have them executed in such a effective and strong manner. How long did y'all shoot for? <laughs> it was very quick. The first day was only 11 days. Uh, our, our first, 11? Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> I mean, it, 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 that can work because we primarily shot in one location. Um, the car chase scene, really, I think that ended up taking like three days of yeah. our shoot. So like maybe a day and a half. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then we had to go back and um, do some additional photography about six months later after we did the edit and we saw like what was missing or you know we we actually ended up rewriting uh some uh, you know two scenes um just to make the film stronger and we're so glad that we did it really was worth it and that was three days so what is that 11 12 13 14 days i mean i would not it's like that insane, to be the norm yeah. it is yeah. <laughs> It is, but that's what you have to do when you are a no-budget filmmaker, you know, and, and asking so many people, we, you know, to work for free um, or, or almost nothing, very low budget, you know, you want to not take up too, many, too, much pe too much of people's time, you know what I mean? I hear about people making films where they have to come, like, shoot on weekends or come back for, and I was, like, not interested in that because, well, I won't criti criticize it because that's not cool because it, it obviously does work for some people, but not for me. Y'all needed that camaraderie. Yeah. To fit. Like, I, I think I saw it in, in screening it. Um, gosh, though, 11 days. I never expected that short. <laughs> um, as far as um, response to the film, I know it hasn't been many screenings, but the L.A. screening, what was, how has the response been from people who have seen it and, and family members? I mean, what, what have you gotten back from people seeing it? Do you mind if I talk about that at all? Okay. Um, <clears throat> so I've gotten to go. I, you know, I've I've been fortunate enough to travel kind of really around the country so far with this. We this is our fifth fil film festival, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, you know, I've gone to and I ha we have played in front of so many different types of audiences um, that it's shocking to me to 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 see how positively people are responding to the film and to see people of just a wide variety of demographics um, loving it and seeing themselves in the movie um, is beautiful. But truly my favorite parts of this experience has been when um, Latino audiences come and they stand up and want after the screening during the Q&A they want to tell their story and <laughs> it is it, it's so beautiful because uh, it just reinforces that we did we've done the right thing um, that that there are dreams of um, you know of empowering people or um, helping people see themselves for the first time on screen um, it is truly magical. I was just at a film festival last week in Columbus, Ohio. A woman got up, two women got up and told their story. And, um, and one woman had brought her daughter um, who is about to become, go into be, uh, to college to become a screenwriter. And um, you know, I just said there is no better time to be a Latina in in film right now because your story, people want to hear your story, and we're just at the at the cusp of the tipping point to get get those stories out there. And so, it, it was like I feel like in a way like her her mother, you know, this young woman's mother coming to see the movie, who she said this was my life, um, 
to see that other young people are out there doing it and are succeeding, I think that really gave her um, the courage to let her daughter go, you know, <laughs> like, and I don't think she was expecting, she said she was not expecting that when she walked in, you know, mm -hmm. that she was not expecting the film to be what it was. She was expecting to see another Latino film where, you know, people are portrayed as stereotypes and, you know, not, nothing with a, as much heart as what we have created so you know David you, you made a point earlier about um, there were the particular films that you guys kind of looked at as, as mm -hmm. first inspiration but mm -hmm. then obviously realizing you had to create something mm -hmm. brand new mm -hmm. um, I'm curious what films did you look at I mean kind of mm -hmm. you, you brought up the 70s so I thought Edward James almost has got to be in at least one of them well <laughs> I'm curious though like what Specific, specifically, there was there was this one movie, and this is because you know I grew up a child of the '80s in front of the television, and you know we had cable, <laughs> and I got to watch things that probably shouldn't, I wouldn't let my kid watch now at, at same age. But uh, well, there was this uh, one film called uh, Over the Edge, mm -hmm. which was I think one it was one of Matt Dillon's earlier roles, and it was all about these bored kids in the subdivision in like. Arizona or I, I don't remember you know maybe it was California I think and the name of the subdivision was New Granada and um, the kids went over the edge and they took over but I remember even as a kid watching and I was like whoa there's all these kids and they're doing stuff and there's no parents around and they're just going for it um, but it I think it affected it that film always stuck with me because of narratively the focus was from their perspective. And it was them going after something that, that they wanted, you know, and ultimately having it go up in flames. Um, but also, you know, just with the, the 70s in general, a kind of a focus on story over plot, you know, and I think now we're, we're also used to it going to a film that's quick and fast and that within the first 30 <laughs> seconds they establish the hero and what his mission is going to be and then boom 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 this happens and then expo and then you know this and you know as viewers of modern film everybody has the ability really to map out plot points and oh the oh look look uh, she's crying it's the end of the second act uh, let's you know <laughs> like what's, what's gonna happen now um, so just having air in scenes and having people talk and having uh, more space for the narrative and for the characters to develop that was really important to us um, and then also the films that uh, the outsiders and um, you know, basically all the S.E. Hinton movies the S.E. <laughs> Hinton books that got made into movies that was a that was kind of a, a, a big spiritual inspiration for it. one of the things I loved about the film is is I could see someone taking this film and trying to make it a very political statement, um, whereas I don't think you guys intended to do that at all. I didn't see it on screen. Um, how much fun was it not having to try and hit those tropes or hit those moments where you're having to, oh, this is our fence scene. This is obviously an allusion to that type mm -hmm. of fence. But you guys did show us just these kids taking over this house in a very different way, a childlike demeanor. Mm -hmm. Um, was that idea always the strong point? Did you ever waver from that? Was there ever a moment that you did want to touch on the politics, or was it always stick with those kids? We shot before the election. Yeah. We shot, we shot, if you're talking about uh, Trump or... Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we actually shot the film before any of, any of that happened. So, you know, this is really just... Um, <clears throat> yeah, so like we're, we're kind of like lucky in that way, I guess, yeah. that, you know, our film has become relevant mm -hmm. uh, in that way. You know, if, if you, you want to tie it to that, um, you know. Um, it just shows how um, the themes are so relevant, even without the political climate. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's really, you know, yeah, I mean, I don't have, I don't know. I'm not trying to make it, but I didn't see it as that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and, and one, one, one of my ways to wrap my head around it when we first got it started writing and getting into the trenches on it, and I think with Laura and our, our theater backgrounds, because we both spent a lot of time in the theater, uh, for me, I, I thought about Shakespeare. And it's just like, you know, Matt 
the main character is this young buck going into this kingdom and crowning himself and then bringing in his subjects and you know they're living as if it is their birthright and they're claiming it because for whatever reason he feels it belongs to him and you know then it all falls apart like it does in Shakespeare always right and you know there's you know the the steps for tragedy there so to me that that was part of the universal nature of the film but you know stuff was brewing when we were writing too and we knew that it could be viewed with a very political lens but again if if we were going to try and shoehorn it into that and, and make things this you know and into that or whatever then it, it might not be as strong or it might not or it might date itself you know and i don't know one of the things that we haven't thought about but i just thought about now because we're having this discussion is how is this film going to look in 10 years like what's the response going to be from an audience then hopefully, hopefully we'll find out yeah, yeah. I mean, I know, uh, you know, for me, everything is a political, everything, every moment in that movie is a political statement. Um, but I just believe as a writer and a director that you have to back off and not be obvious about it. You know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> I think our most obvious moment in the film is the scene with the neighbor, you know, um, which for me was just incredibly important, it, you know, to, um, you know, like, <clears throat> that's actually just me speaking very specifically to specific people in my life. And I think that if you can make your art, I mean, I've always believed if you can make your art as personal and specific as possible, it will resonate with people on a, you know, grander scale. So, you know, people, it's just something that a lot of people are thinking about right now. You know what I mean? Like we don't have to be obvious about it, but we can just have it be, be like, just gently place it there. So, yeah. Um, how can we keep up with the film uh, as far as audience members, like any sites, any other future screenings? Um, and then, you know, what's up next for you guys in, in the life of Rich Kids? I'd love to hopefully get people to see this after this film festival. Yeah, so we have a website. Um, it's richkidsthemovie.com, and you can see all of the stuff on there um, when our next screenings are. The next one will be in L.A. Um, San Francisco. At San Francisco's New first? York. San Francisco. Oh, no, or New York. L- New, York. Uh, New York. So <laughs> New York, yes. Um, so the New York tell Latino the, Film tell Festival. Tell them about the, what, what, the New York one is really important. Oh, it's huge. It's a Latino film festival. But and what? Who's presenting it? <laughs> HBO. And oh, wow. we're excited. Oh, yeah, we're so HBO's excited. Is, Isn't America, American Airlines part of it, too? American Airlines. And yeah. Well, yeah. And then and Google HBO is hold, uh, hosting and panels and everything like that. So, so it definitely turned into something a lot yeah. bigger than I thought it would. I mean, yeah. it was already big, you know. Um, actually, so Laura had no idea <laughs> whenever um, we were actually announced into the festival. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I called HBO, her. Yeah. yeah, I called her so many times while I was at work. <laughs> And I was like, oh my God, answer, answer, left her voicemail. She didn't get my voicemail. She called me back. She's like, hey, you okay? <laughs> and I was like, oh, so um, New York. She's like, what about it? I'm like, what? what do you mean, what about it? What do you mean? And she's like, what do you mean? I'm like, we got into it. She's just bawling, crying on the floor, uh, on the phone. We're like on the phone for like 20 minutes. And um, I'm crying the whole time. Yeah. Like, Why didn't I get an email? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's pretty huge for us with uh, Google, HBO, American Airlines, um, all that stuff. So we're really excited to uh, be in New York soon. Um, and then we have LA. So it's the downtown LA Film Festival. Mm-hmm. And then we have San Francisco. Which mm-hmm. one's that one? Is that one? The Cinema San Francisco Latino Film Festival. Cinema San Francisco. Where Latino do you Film guys Festival. is that screening f- festival like theater wise? Isn't that at one of the old San Francisco theaters? Um, I don't know. They um, isn't that uh, is yeah. yeah. <laughs> that might be where they shoot. We we have a couple of people that are in San Francisco, but I think oh. I know where. It's an old timey theater. It's really cool. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm super was excited. excited to get into that one. Um, so we, you know, like we're just at the point now where we don't, you know, festivals really kind of don't start talking to you until about a month before, you know, and then you know what's going on. So. Um, I'm waiting to hear from them. <laughs> the ball has been really like rolling yeah. lately. Like um, it was, it's been two years almost since we filmed, and um, like it was like nothing for a year and a half. I was like, yeah. oh, okay, cool. You know, like we just finished the film. They just put it in the can, done. Cool. Now we wait. 
and all of a sudden, like, it's a festival after festival after festival. I, actually, after the Houston Latino, we had no idea where we were going. Mm -hmm. Like, no idea. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, we've got... Um, sorry. I just realized. It's yeah. okay. Uh, we've got, like, New York and Phoenix. L.A. and Phoenix. Oh, that was huge for us. And then... Um, yeah, it's just now it's a lot more. And hopefully we have some coming up soon, you know, yeah. after this, yeah. after um, San Francisco and everything like that. Because yeah. we, just, we just did Massachusetts and Ohio. Mm -hmm. So it's really exciting. So hopefully, like, the ball just keeps rolling yeah. and I mean, makes a bigger smoke, snowball. Yeah. Every time we go to a festival, there's always somebody that is, it was there and says, oh, we, we want to take you to this next thing. You know what I mean? Like, so we just got invited to, we've gotten invited to go screen at the University of Houston. Well, they, they want to see the movie. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. We did? And then, I'm, I'm, yeah. Uh, uh, and then the Wexler Center for the Arts in Ohio, which is a, you know, really big facility, Ohio University, they had come to the screening and they reached out and said, we would like to see about bringing rich kids to show our students. And so, you know, because for us, like, you know, it's like we want to, we made this movie for, you know, teens and folks in their early 20s, kids in their early 20s. And so I, you know, we have yet really to reach them. And, you know, because right now we're just reaching film festival people, but the film festival people are the people that are, the people that are showing at the film festivals are the folks that are going to help us get it to those people, you know. Uh, we don't have a distribution deal and, you know, we may not get one, I don't know, but, you know, we will, this has been a grassroots com campaign the entire time. We, um, <laughs> yeah, and so we will, you know, we're, we're working with a plan uh, to release it ourselves on iTunes and Amazon, you know, it should we not get a distribution offer. I mean, it's just really competitive out there, so you just don't know. But, but it will be available in early uh, 2019. We'll drop it on iTunes. And, but what we're doing right now is we're just building our fan base folks like you who see the film and you really like it and you think that you might want to tell other people about it. It, it. You know, truly a success of a film really is based on word of mouth, you know what I mean? And somebody seeing a movie and saying, oh, I love that, you should see it, you know, and sharing it with their friends. So every time we go to a film festival, we try to get as many emails as we can and so people can go to the website and sign up for our mailing list or when we go to the screening today we will be passing around a pad where people can sign up you know what i mean um, also uh, like us on facebook rich kids the movie uh, and follow us at rich kids the movie on instagram that which is how we yeah. find out about the new york festival yeah, and we also yeah. Have a Twitter. i don't know what the at is uh, but we uh, have a twitter so just look it up and we have beach towels yeah, we have beach towels. Yeah, we we have a merchant we, we, we have a merchandising page. So you know, well, towels for the pool, towels for hanging out at the pool. Yeah, yeah. it's that time of year. Yeah, we definitely yeah. Need it. you're gonna. I have a towel, and I'm like, I love it. Well, guys, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for, for bringing time. the film.